right, section 9.3, saving money. So in this video, um, I'm going to begin to talk about something called annuity. So what's an annuity? It's a sequence of a regular payment made into an account or taken out of an account over time. So when we talk about annuity, um, it's that, that particular word is referring to sequence of regular payment, okay, that we pay into an account. So as far as in investment concerned, investing money for your future, um, normally people, uh, if people have 401k, a retirement account, then from every paycheck, they will actually put a certain percentage into that retirement. All right, so this is called annuity formula for finding the future value, okay? The future value FV of an annuity saving account is calculated with this formula, all right? Where PMT is a payment amount that is deposited on a regular basis, R is your APR, N is the number of a regular payment made each year, and FV is a future value after so many years. Okay, so T is in years again. So in the last video, I, I was talking about um, imagine um, you buying a $30,000 car, okay, and then you make payments on it. So imagine that, um, imagine spending that same amount of money buying a car which depreciate over time. Think of a, put it into like a savings or some kind of um, a money market account. Then that same same money you're spending to buy that car, in an investment concept, it will actually grow into um, grow into money that you can actually get to keep rather than buying a car. Okay, that actually depreciate. So if you know your monthly payment and you know you're paying twelve months. And for however many years, okay, then you can actually plug in number into this this particular formula. If you know the interest rate, that would be great. And then you can actually see the money that you are spending to buy the car can also grow into um, grow into a, a big amount of money that you get to keep. This is called the opportunity cost. If money is spending buying a car, then it cannot be spent. Um, to for investment, that's the reason why I mentioned it. Um, when it comes to when is the best time to invest for your future, one of the biggest thing is to pay off all your debt, because because a lot of people do this thing backwards. They tend to invest a lot of money into their retirement, but but yet still also trying to pay off their debt at the same time. Um, so imagine that you imagine the the money that you're paying off debt, take those money, put it into the investment. Then your your future value can even grow much um, can even grow bigger. Okay, so a lot of students do these things out of order, um, which doesn't really make sense, because without emergency fund in place, then all the money that you put into your retirement, eventually, if an emergency happened, you still end up have to take those money out. Okay, then all that time, um, all those money invested will eventually um, almost being like wasted. Okay, so let's try this formula. Okay, uh, this is we just got to read these problem a little bit carefully. Cameron starts an IRA. Okay, individual retirement account there. Are there are two basic type of IRA, a regular IRA and a Roth IRA. What is so-called a Roth IRA is um, it's a it's the same type of account, but Roth is actually using using take home money to put into the retirement account. Okay, a regular IRA is actually using pre-tax dollar. So Cameron starts this IRA at the age of twenty-six to save for retirement. She deposit four hundred dollar each month. Okay, so she doing this monthly. So our N is already twelve. The IRA has an average annual interest rate of six percent. So that's my R. How much money will she have saved when she retired at the age of sixty five? So my T, my time, got to be sixty five. Sorry. Minus 26, okay? 
which it will give me 39 years. So she is investing for 39. She's thinking about investing for 39 years. All right. So her future value. So rather than spend $400 each month buying a car, buying a brand new truck, she decided to put into her retirement account. So now we're going to take this $400 times. Okay. Brackets. Just follow the formula. Parenthesis. One plus R is 0 0.06 divided by making 12 months regular, uh, making monthly payments. So N is 12, raising to the 12 times 39. All right, bracket. Whole thing divided by R over N. So R is 0 0.06 divided by 12. All righty. Put it in the parentheses, just like the, just like um the way how it's written in the formula. So basically, the way how we're gonna key this in, is basically I want you to key in this big old fraction part first. So the formula kind of already told me, um, what I need, you know, what I need to key in, except the exponent part. If I want to put this exponent if I want a calculator to do this exponent for me, I will put them in the separate parentheses. Okay. So the bracket kind of tells the, the bracket kind of, kind of saying, hey, let's do everything inside the bracket first for the numerator before we will divide it by whatever is down here. So let me show you. I, I, I'm actually going to leave the $400 out for a minute. I'm going to put that in at the last. So there's no bracket in the calculator, so we gotta. So instead of put bracket, we we'll just open the parenthesis. All right, open the inner parenthesis here, right before the one plus. One plus point zero six divided by twelve. All right, let's close the parenthesis. All right, let's raise in the exponent. Now let's open the blue parenthesis, typing twelve times thirty nine. Close the blue parenthesis. Now we're going to close the bracket, which is just closing another parenthesis. So all that is on the numerator. Now divided by the denominator, which will open another parenthesis because that tells the calculator that um, we will figure out what's in this parenthesis and then we will figure out what's in that top bracket before the division will take place. So make sure this division is actually on the outside the parenthesis, okay? Make sure this big old long division sign, which is outside the parentheses. All right, 0 0.06 divided by 12. Close the parentheses for the denominator. All right, press enter, which is 264 something. So that's that's the whole. So this is the answer for this thing I highlight in yellow. Now times by my payment, 400, that's up front. Oops, sorry, my, my future value is going to be $825,670.73. Hang on a second, I'm not tapping something wrong here. Uh, 12 times, sometimes when we put so much parentheses in here, it throw everything off. Uh, my answer is a little bit too much. Let me do this again, okay? And I apologize. Uh, I know what the answer is. I just want to make sure I'm typing everything right. The 6%, right? Divide by 12. All right. Tell you what. Let's try this again, okay? Um, let's try... second let me let me look at this one more time one two one and close and close it all right tell you what let's do the top first let's do the whole top first and then we will key in on the separate step with the bottom because the top is the complicated part let me delete all this
All right, so this is my whole entire top. Now we will divide it by, all right, put this in the parentheses. So I figure out my top first and then open parentheses, 0 0.06 divided by 12. Did I missing something? Oh, I sure did. I apologize. I forgot the minus one. That's the reason why. All right, let's do this again. I didn't even write it down. All right, let me erase this real quick. I forgot there's a minus one on the formula. Okay. I knew I was off by a little bit. Minus one. This minus one, be careful, it's actually not on the exponent. Okay. So when we key it in, all right, let me key it in one more time. Okay. Bracket. Parenthesis one plus point zero six divided by twelve. Close parenthesis exponent. Open the blue parenthesis twelve times thirty nine. Close the blue parenthesis minus one, and then close the bracket. There you go. Divided by open parenthesis, 0 0.06 divided by 12, close it, all right, so that will be right there, then times by 400, there you go, that's the answer right here, sorry about that, forgot the minus one, so basically this $400, okay, every month for the next 39 years, into this 6% account will eventually go on to $745,670.73. Okay, opportunity cost. You imagine what happened to the, to the $400 car payment after 39 years. There are a lot of student, a lot of student and people argues, can we have, can we have can we buy a car without a car payment? Well, yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. We might not buy the brand new car. Okay. We might not be able to save up all that money to buy a brand new car, but we can buy a good, reliable used car by saving our money, by saving our cash for it. It's, it can be done. I've seen people done it. All righty. So let's try another one. Okay. This is about Logan. But this problem is a little bit different than the previous one. Now, Logan started the same IRA at age 34 to save for retirement. He deposited $450 each month. Upon retirement at age of 65, his retirement saving is $959,293.31. So this $959,000 is basically the same as the seven hundred forty-five up here. So that's kind of weird because why, so why would the problem tell me what, what I will end up? So the Cameron problem, we need to figure out what would be in our savings account. But this one already told me what would be in my savings account. So this problem is actually asking, determine the amount of money Logan actually deposit over the length of the investment. So think about this, how much if we know Logan end up to be end up to have nine hundred fifty nine thousand dollars, right? Logan actually did, how much money did old Logan actually deposit it? Because when Logan only deposit four hundred fifty dollars each month, there's no way, okay, he deposit enough money to become nine fifty nine. So when it comes to investment using compound interest, it's the interest plus the principal. Month after month in the, is what allows us to to eventually grow into this humongous amount of um, money, okay? But as far as how much money we put in, okay, it's not even close to what, what you can grow into. That's why, you know, in when we talk about compound interest formula before, I keep on using the phrase, you know, compound interest formula is basically an exponential explosion on your money. 
So this problem, I need to find out how much money did Logan deposit and how much he made in interest upon his retirement. So this is the way how we do it. Basically, you just take, well, you need to fit, we need to figure out the years here. What's our time? So retire at 65 minus 34. That when he's, when Logan started. So that means he actually invested for 31 years. Okay. Now we also know he deposit $450 every month. Okay. So let's give this a try, okay? $450 a month times Oh, sorry, my pen is acting up. 12 months. This 12 means 12 months in a year times by 31 years. So this number will be how much Logan invested for 31 years. 450 times 12 times 31. He put in $167,400. But the account ended up to be at $959,000. So this is how much he actually deposited over the years. So with an ex exponential explosion on the money, you know, this exponent okay, in the formula is the exponential explosion on your money. How much interest did this account earn him? So then we take nine five nine. Oh, sorry. Two nine three point thirty one minus one six seven four hundred. Right? Because inside the Nine hundred fifty nine thousand dollars it has what he put in it and it also have interest inside of it. So if you subtract what he put in, then that will tell you how much money this account earned him in interest. Nine five nine two nine three point point thirty one minus one six seven four hundred. So this account earn him that much in interest. Okay, seven hundred ninety one thousand dollars worth of interest. Here this acting up. Eight nine three point thirty one. All right. So that's the reason why a lot of people say, you know, rather than spend the money buying cigarette, buying coffee every day, if we would save that money, okay, put them into a retirement account. Then after so many years, okay, though you know the account will grow into this much, okay. That's that's how they you know that formula like this. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> formula like this, okay, is um formula like this is um is the reason why people make those kind of claim. So again, when when we don't when we are continue to pay our debt. Okay, when we keep on buying stuff using using credit, okay, keep on paying payment to other people, then we cannot actually pay ourselves a monthly payment into our future. Okay, that's the reason why. Again, I have to stress, you know, the steps on how to 
how to invest for your future. Okay, pay off your debt as quick as you can. The more, the sooner you pay off your debts, the more money you have on hand that you can actually allocate into your retirement. All right, I'm gonna end this particular um, objective here um, with these two problems. In the next video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to look at the same formula but figure out what the monthly payment is, okay? Have a future value in our mind. What do you want to retire with? And then we can figure out the monthly payment. All right, that will conclude this um, part one of the annuity video. Thank you for watching.